Hello. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to another ConnectWise Tuesday. I am actually trying to get my video to start. There it is. Sorry about that. It was taking a moment to kick on. So hello, everybody, and welcome. I am going to open up the ability for each and every one of you to feel free to have a conversation. Feel free to unmute yourself if you'd like. Hello. And uh, hi, Lisa, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Doing great. I've given everybody the ability to chat with us today, so please don't be shy to unmute yourself from the mic, join in the conversation. Um, the more conversation we have, I think the more you guys all are able to get out of this as well. Uh, for those of you that are new to ConnectWise Tuesday, my name is Rose with Barry McKinley. We are a management consulting firm, and part of what we do is a lot with ConnectWise and the suite of products. Every Tuesday, we offer um, a free hour webinar session where we go through and we talk about the different product suite. Uh, so the first Tuesday of the month, we do manage. Second Tuesday of the month is automate. This being the third Tuesday of the month, our focus is sell. And then the fourth Tuesday of the month, we do an industry spotlight. So myself and Will Young from our team work together to uh, produce and uh, come up with ideas and thoughts around uh, what we could be teaching you guys that might be beneficial for you to use and implement in your businesses from day to day. Uh, in terms of the product suite, we do open up the opportunity for all questions and concerns. If it's something we can answer, we are happy to dive into it. Some of the stuff we can't answer, um, but we're pretty well uh, versed in our, in our lines of expertise there. Um, I will be frank, I can't answer anything about Automate. I am not technical, but I do manage and sell very well. Uh, so I'm happy to dive into questions you may have around that. Um, today's session is going to be posed around uh, sell. So if you have any particular questions that you were hoping to get some answers to today, please use this opportunity. We can do this through chat, you can do it through microphone, you can do it through the Q&A. Um, this is a very casual, relaxed environment. Uh, we're all friends here, so don't be shy. Did somebody have a question? Hey Rose, it's Jill, I have a question. Hi, yeah. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Hey, I know Cell did an update late last week. I think it was. Yeah. At least that's when we got it. D has anybody reported that um, email notification when someone opens up something at Order Porter or one um, signs a quote, those email notifications aren't coming through? Have you heard that? I have not. Um, I've actually seen those coming through pretty successfully. Now, that being said, within their um their update one of the fixes that they applied was the issue that was being reproduced where there were um email connection issues specifically for those that were using the direct integration to office 365 it was still looking for kind of your email credentials um so i don't know if maybe that did something in your system specifically um, is anybody else experiencing anything like that where they're not getting their emails coming through properly? The notifications and cells since the update? Steve, no worries. We appreciate you having been on for a moment. Okay, so it doesn't seem like it. I would highly okay. recommend getting maybe a ticket open with cell directly. Um, in which case uh, they can take a look and see what's going on with that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'm sorry I couldn't give more assistance with that. All right, so um, our plan today is to actually start diving into a bit of bundles, and if we have time after bundles, maybe diving into linking tabs um, and updating quantities through those links as well. So if you have questions again don't be shy don't feel like you can't interrupt what i'm doing please feel free i want this to be valuable to you guys is there anybody here just a show of hands that's using bundles and sell today nobody 
All right, so this might be something learning completely new. Um, so in the update, uh, Cell has kind of changed a little bit of how they do it. Um, it's pretty much the same thing, uh, just they've changed the menu settings a little bit. So that's not gonna be something that's really gonna impact any of you guys, just because of the fact that you're not really using the bundles, but hopefully you'll learn something new out of it. So there's a couple of different ways that we can use bundles and I am actually going to do a screen share here with you. Give me just one moment. Okay, show of hands if you can see my ConnectWise Tuesday cell that I have open. Wonderful. Okay, so when I start sharing my screen, I just want to make sure I get the chat box open too so I don't miss anything. So give me just one moment here. All right. So a couple of different ways that we can work with bundles. We can work with bundles by creating just a bunch of line items inside of our quote and say we don't want all of those to show through this way with individual pricing and create it as a bundle just in cell. Um, we can import a bundle from manage to sell. Show of hands, how many of you are using bundles in your product catalog today? All right, so we got a lot to learn. This is great. Um, so we can create bundles inside of our product catalog and manage and bring those in directly to sell and they'll be bundled automatically for us. Um, or we can use, um, this is another product within ConnectWise, we can use something that's called phased bundling. Um, so phased bundling is something that I've kind of newly been exploring um, over the past few months. It's, it's a wonderful concept. It works really great with projects. Um, so it's something I feel we can maybe get some value out of just kind of touching point on. So let's start first and foremost just with how we would create a bundle inside of a cell from a list of products. So I'm gonna start just by you know, using my standard hardware tab here. I have just the basic outline of a quote and I'm gonna come up and connect it to my manage and search my manage product catalog. And there shouldn't be a lot in here. This is just our sandbox that we're connected to here. So let's go, a lot of these are actual bundles. Uh, we'll do a miscellaneous, a service fixed fee, uh, service binder, uh, and a CW Tuesday. Okay, so I've attached my products, I mean, just, just like you would do any normal quote, right? Um, and then we come in here, back to our prepare content, and throw some prices in here. So I'm gonna make this one 500. And let's say from a quantity perspective, I'm gonna have 10 hours of service in there. It's gonna be a quantity of, let's say six here. Uh, we'll do three here and we'll leave one as the miscellaneous. <clears throat> if I take and I come to my little drop down box here and I select all, you see I have this little menu option here on this arrow that says bundles and I can say create bundle. When I do that, it's gonna ask me to create basically a part for it, right? So I'm gonna give it a part number, and this is not, as long as you're not showing manufacturer part number in your templates today, it's not going to be client facing. Now, if you are showing part numbers to your clients, this is going to be a client facing part number, so you'll either wanna make adjustments to that for the tab to hide that, or you'll wanna make sure that it's something that you feel okay about the client seeing. So it's really just dependent on a case-by-case -case situation for what you do as an organization and how you present your um, proposals to your prospects and to your clients. So for a bundle part number, I'm just gonna call this test-CW Tuesday. And then I'll give it a description. The bundle description is the equivalent of the product description. ConnectWise. Tuesday bundle. And then I say how many quantities I want in the bundle. Now when we're working with bundles, 
and we're creating it for that first time, it's looking at all of the quantities here as one bundle. So if I said I wanted a bundle quantity of two, that would make this quantity two, quantity 20, quantity 12, and quantity six. And um, that's not what I'm going for. I wanna just go with a quantity of one and hit okay. Now, if that is what you're going for, obviously then you wanna go ahead and make sure that that quantity is updated properly. What that's done is it has created our manufacturer part number and our product description. It has totaled all of our override prices based off of our quantities. So it's basically taken the extended price and it's put it together as our override price. And here's what's included inside that bundle. So just for a preliminary look, this is what that would represent to your client or to your prospect. So this is not um, a customized template. So by default, it's showing the manufacturer part number. And this is what I said, if, you're, if you show it by default, make sure that you have that something that's client facing that you feel good about um, because it will show up there. Here is our product description. And as you see here, it's just got our price and our extended price associated to it. We can see everything that comprises this particular bundle just without pricing. So bundles have a couple of options and that's kind of what we wanna start on is just kind of those base options. And to get to those, you'd go to quote setup, drop down the more field and select edit publish settings. Once you're in edit publish settings, this first header um, in this like main area right here is all about bundles, okay? So the print the bundle header line, that is actually that product description that we gave with it, right? So if I didn't wanna print it, I wouldn't have to. Uh, it would look a little weird without it though. Print bundle item lines, that's what gives us the line breakdown. So I can uncheck that and then it'll just give me the bundle header and the bundle pricing. So I can hit save here and come back to my prepare content click on my PDF, refresh. And for those that are new to sell, you wanna make sure that you're clicking that refresh button every time you make a change in order for it to commit the change to the PDF previewer. So now if I scroll down and I take a look at it, the only thing that's here is my manufacturer part number because I didn't turn that off. And then my product description with the line item total. So depending on what you're trying to present from a bundled perspective, you can really get granular on it or you can leave it be um, just very simplistic and say it's just this one line item and this is what we're quoting you. Um, so we see this used a lot of times in projects or if you're doing maybe a new server build and you don't wanna include like all of the different components that you're gonna purchase individually, you can roll that all up into one line item here that will identify just very specifically um, what actually the cost is that you're selling the server for. And you don't have to worry about them trying to beat you up on price for hard drives or RAM or anything like that. Questions so far on this? All right, so we look like we're still doing good. Again, if you have questions, jump right in. You can put them in the Q&A box. You can put them in the chat box. I'm keeping an eye on both here. All right, so let's come on back here and see what else we can do with bundles. So if I wanted to update the quantities within these bundles, innately I can't do that. I can click here, as you can see, it is just non-editable. Um, this tends to trip people up a lot when they're working with bundles. Um, if you're familiar with editing your grid view, you just come here. One of our grid view options is actually bundle quantity. So if we just go into this edit layout field and we go search bundle, you can see here I have a couple of different options. I have bundle price and I have bundle quantity. And when I select them, they put themselves at the end here so I can just move these into a position that make more sense for me. So I want my bundle quantity up front and I want my bundle price right next to it. I'm now gonna change my layout name because if I leave my layout name as default, it's gonna yell at me because it won't let you save over the default. I'm just gonna say plus bundle plus bundle and save layout. And I click finished. 
So now if I wanted to um, adjust my bundle quantity here, I could say that this is two, this is one, this is three, and that's two. And so let's say my bundle included this amount of items as opposed to the first amount that I had, I can make those physical adjustments. And that's still just one bundle, right? And you can see how it impacted our pricing here, all right? Um, likewise, I can override my bundle price. So this is uh, an example of what it would be as it's full extended, just kind of all rolled up. But if I said that, it's $2,100 naturally, but because you're buying it as a bundle, I am going to give you a discount of, um, let's say 10%. That would take um, you know, $210 off of there. So without doing the math, I'm gonna say that's uh, 1990, I think. So what you'll see here is I overrode the price and the system automatically adjusted for that. So I said, this is what I want to sell it at. So I know exactly what it, what it ultimately is going to cost me, um, but I'm going to overwrite it, and I'm going to give them a discount because they're purchasing it as a bundle. So that's what the bundle price gives us the ability to do, okay? Um, I can also come in here and say that our bundle price here is 125 and our bundle price for, because it's a project installation, they're going to do a lot more. Maybe I want to discount that to 150 from 175 and I'm going to give them uh, let's say 600 here and 10. Okay so I can make up additional bundle pricing here um, and I can use this to allow it to roll up into my bundle as well. Now the reason we're not seeing that adjustment is because I did override the price here and if you know anything about sell, once you do a manual override on the price, it kind of sticks in there until you back everything out. So <clears throat> bundles have a lot of great options on how to kind of reconfigurate them, how to re-manipulate them so that everything shows this very specific way. Um, I could have this all total up to some to a larger number and still have this override price here be the 1990s so that I can print that out on the quote as well um, so that they can see that there's a value to purchasing at a bundle if I want the pricing to show. Again, that pricing option is part of um, the setup within the uh, quote setup under that drop down more at a published settings. So a couple of gotchas about bundles. When you bring a bundle in, you win the opportunity, you group by line item, and you bring it back into the manage opportunity. What we see happen oftentimes is it will create very nicely actually on the opportunity, and I'll show you here in a moment, um, all of these products, and it'll reflect in the opportunity as a bundle. Um, when it goes to the invoice, it'll invoice very nicely so that it's invoicing the way that you wanna see it. Um, but the problem is, is it's going to create this product right here as a product inside your product in your managed product catalog. It will not automatically bundle all of these line items into that product. So I'm gonna show you guys that because it's important to understand how the product behaves coming backwards into manage. Typically, I recommend if you want the bundle to be created in manage that you start and manage, create the bundle there first and then bring it into sell so that you don't run into those kind of hiccups down the road of having just bundle class items with nothing associated to them. So I'm gonna come here and click this plus sign. And I'm going to tell this to group by line item so that it brings over all the line items. And you'll see here that it wants to create this new item and this new item is that bundle header, right? So it's saying that our cost is 345, our sell price is 1990, and then um, it is taxable. It's a bundle class item, which is if you're not using those, it's gonna be a new class that you're not necessarily familiar with. Um, from the type status, then we would have to say that it's you know non-inventory. I'm gonna classify it as hardware, hardware, and um, I'll just throw sell on there as the manufacturer. So now I'm gonna go ahead and update my opportunity and it's going to create that product inside of our product catalog. Oops. 
Meanwhile, let me go ahead and share manage with you guys for a moment. Okay. So if I come here to my companies and we go to our XYZ test company. Oh, sorry, it's still in our product catalog. XYZ test company. And come to our opportunity. Here is our opportunity that we were working with. So we're going to open this up. And look at our products tab. And as you can see, it's created this as a bundle. And it's brought all of these line items in. And you can see sequence wise, it's 1.01, 1.02, 0.03, 0.04. And that's how we know that those are all rolled up into what's making this final number here. Okay. So it looks really nice there. Um, it's very encouraging to see that. The gotcha that comes with this, though, is if we come back here now to, <clears throat> excuse me, our product catalog. And we look for our ConnectWise Tuesday bundle. This is what the one we just created here. And it exists very nicely right here with all of the attributes that we pre-designated it for from a bundle perspective. However, in order to have a bundle, like a true bundle, you have to have components associated to it here in Manage. And then none of the components that we put in Cell as our bundle came over and attached themselves. So once this header is created, that's all it is, is just a header. So I can resource that header in the future if I wanted to, um, but there's no products attached to it to bring it in. So if we said that we were taking these components and we wanted to match that to exactly what we did inside of um, inside of our cell quote, which I'm opening up on my other screen, I apologize. I would come in here, I would click the plus for the component, and I would say miscellaneous. And here I can say how many are included in this by default, right? Maybe for my quote, I customized it, um, but traditionally only one is included in there. So I could say that the quantity is generally one. And this is how we want it to show up on the invoice. Do I want it to display via product ID? I don't. Do I want it to display the product description? Well, that depends. Did I list it out as something that was included in, in the uh, in the bundle on the proposal, if that's how I chose to present it, then yeah, I'd let the product description ride through along with the quantity. If not, then I could say no, no quantity, no price, no extended price. So basically, it's just going to be part of the bundle, but it's not going to show anything on the invoice that gives any indication that it's in existence there. Um, if I chose to show the line items, I'd say the description and the quantity, and then hit save. I have to come and do this for each of those line items that I included in this bundle. So I also did service dash fix fee. It's helpful if I can type. All right, beautiful. Description and quantity, save. And do the same thing for the service binder. description and quantity, and save. And then we do the same thing finally for the CW Tuesday. Now in doing this, we are not removing the standard product attributes. We are not removing their ability to be standalone products. We are just saying that these products are also part of this bundle. So if I come here now that this bundle is created, and I go back to my product catalog. As you see here, um, here's my service fixed fee. It still is in existence here. Here is 
my service binder. So these are still individual products. It doesn't take them out of, it's not like childing, right? When you child it, it's like, I can't find it unless I'm looking for that level. This is just saying this product is also used in this bundle, okay? So once you have all of that in play, you can always come back to sell, in which case, let me reshare sell here. All right, so we could come back to sell and we could say that I want the ConnectWise Tuesday bundle. So if I've created the bundle ahead of time, uh, that's not my bundle. There we go, is that it? Yep, here it is. If I click attach here, because I created it and I put all the components together already in Manage, if I go to Prepare Content, now it's the same exact bundle with all of the pricing attributes, just like here. Only this one I pulled out of Manage, so I didn't have to go in and add all of those components and I didn't have to tell it to bundle the product within Cell, okay? But let's say all I wanted to do was quote this this way for the client, but I didn't really want to create it as a bundle inside of Manage. What we would do is we drop down our tab here, we say Edit Tab, and there's a field. Do I have it unhidden? Let me see. I don't think we do. Okay. So, oh, we do right down here. So, ignore bundle headers on Opportunity. Now, some systems have this hidden, some systems don't. I think mine innately does not have it hidden just because we use it as a sandbox as well. So if you look at cell and you look at your edit tab settings and you don't see ignore bundle headers on opportunities, to enable that field, you just click the pencil for wherever you want that field to be enabled, okay? So right here, we have it set up as an admin only option so that only admins can make the determination on whether or not a bundle header should be coming in or not coming in. And this is on a tab level setting. Um, this also prevents people from accidentally creating products that they don't intend to create. So if by default we say our company policy is that we're not doing it, we're only bringing it in from manage if it's an existing bundle, otherwise we don't want you creating a bunch of them in the system, that's a great way to keep it in the admin settings and on your template you can make those adjustments. So by clicking that pencil and clicking that pencil a second time, that gives us the ability to add and remove fields within, within cells tab settings. Once you unhide a field, it is permanently unhidden for every existing quote, every future quote, including templates. What you select that field to do is going to be on a quote by quote and template by template basis, but the field will always exist. So if I just came here and I just looked for the word bundle, you can see ignore bundle header is turned on. If you don't have that check mark, you just make that check mark and it'll be there. So I'm gonna hit okay here. And then I hit save. And when you do, it's going to bring up a configuration name again by default. And you can change your name because it won't let you save over the default. So as you can see here, like what I traditionally do for mine is I generally will click the plus sign plus whatever changes I had made at that time. Um, for me, I'm just gonna save over the one that I have in existence and hit save. And the reason that that is important is because if I come here, I have the ability, where is my, right here, to load my configuration. So like I have my regular default, this shows what everything is as, as hidden. So you see that field is no longer there. Um, but if I come back here and I click my configuration button again, and I click on the one that we were in previously, now it is, right? So it's important to save those in such a way that it makes sense to you to know, like if I wanted to apply this configuration view, so to speak, to um, another tab or to another template, that you have the ability to do so immediately without having to go back and go, what did I search for? What did I enable? So I'm gonna go ahead and click ignore bundle headers. And I'm gonna actually take this and I'm gonna unbundle this. So I'm gonna select all. 
Now, bundles are a little weird um, in that it doesn't like when you select the header itself. Um, that tends to throw a lot of errors if you're trying to unbundle something or remove something from a bundle. It'll it'll give you a, an error that the bundle header is included and it can't perform the action against its own header. So typically when you select all, you just want to come back out and uncheck the box for the header so that that doesn't cause any hiccups as you're trying to do math updates to the system. So I'm going to come into bundles again and I'm going to say remove from bundle. So as you see, my bundle header went away. All my products are still here. So I'm gonna rebundle these with a different header, just so that you can see now that I've checked that box in that tab, how that behaves with ConnectWise. So I'm gonna hit select all, and I'm going to go to bundles and create bundle. For our bundle part number, quantity of one, hit OK. Beautiful. OK, so everything's here. We're in good shape. So now if I come back to, oh, not my PDF, my opportunity. And I group by line item and hit save. Oh, let me show you here. It's not trying to create anything. It's got all of our line items listed individually here. I'm going to hit save. And as that's refreshing, I'm going to move us back to our manage. Okay, so come back here. So you can see now we have nine products in here because we added a second bundle in, right? So here's that second bundle that we just added in. But as you can see, the new bundle header that we created, it didn't bring it in. It just brought in each line item that was associated with that. So the takeaway from this is that you can create a bundle inside of ConnectWise that, or I'm sorry, inside a cell <clears throat> that doesn't create a bundle inside of ConnectWise. If you say as a rule of thumb, we don't want to do deal with bundles, that's perfectly okay. You don't have to. It'll bring over each line item independently. Where this is extremely beneficial, especially as you start treading waters into the area of bundles, is when you are working with um, agreements. So if you're quoting managed services, a lot of times when we quote managed services, we do not want to show all of the individual things, quantities and pricing associated because we don't want our prospects or clients to think that they can ad hoc and go, oh, well, you know what? I don't think we need this item. I don't think we need that item. And start trying to remove things out of the bundle that you say, this is our standard baseline. You have to have this. So we see a lot of partners using bundles to impact the proposal process for managed services, which is great. But you cannot convert bundle class items onto a quote or not, I'm sorry, not on a quote, onto an agreement. So ConnectWise agreements currently do not support bundle class items. So if you were to bring that into ConnectWise as a bundle, you would not be able to move that to an agreement from your opportunity. So if you present it as a bundle in cell and tell it ignore bundle headers, when it comes back to manage, it's going to come just as all, a list of the agreement class items, and then you can move those over to the agreement. How are we doing so far, guys? You guys are really quiet. We following along okay? Show of hands, you're still with me? Did I put you guys to sleep yet? <laughs> Thanks, Jill. I know, I, always, I know you always got my back. Lisa, I know you're there too. <laughs> all right. So questions so far, we doing okay on this? Bundles can get really confusing, so I like to just kind of help you guys digest that. But, you know, I have a love-hate relationship with, um, with bundles. I think they're amazing in the right use case. Um, I almost always love them from a, a quoting perspective. I, I feel like it makes the proposal very clean. 
um, in Manage, bundles have a really great place if you're quoting hardware together or a bundle of software together. Um, you know, like there's a lot of value I feel with them, but it is important that you understand how um, bundles impact, you know, the financial back end, how they route into, you know, your chart of accounts, because as you notice, they are a product, right? So for mapping all of the revenue from that to um, based off of that line item, then we want to make sure that from the finance perspective, that it's hitting the right chart of accounts, right? So um, they can be a little tricky, they can be a little messy, so it's really important to understand them, uh, maybe do some testing with them on your end before you go out and create a bunch of bundles, right? Because you could cause yourself a world of hurt with them. So that's why I have a love-hate relationship with them. I, I think they're an amazing tool that can be used inside of the products and the product suite. Um, you just gotta have to really, really understand them because products get messy just in general when you start dealing with the financial aspect of it. We don't, we don't want to cause any headaches for finances as we start moving through the process because I have some pitchforks coming after me if you do. So, <laughs> all right. So we've got that set. The next level that I want to show you guys is I'm actually going to pop into while we're in here back to our product catalog. Um, can you see the product catalog? Show of hands. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So, with the product catalog, um, I had mentioned early on about phase bundles, and like I said, this is kind of a newer play area for me. I, and I, I really come to enjoy that and to appreciate what they can do in a proposal process, um, as as well as to a project process. So. We have some phased bundle class items here. So if I come here and just select bundle for our class, so narrow our view, okay? So this new module right here, if I click this, we'll see it's already been predefined as a bundle, right? So it's got configuration, training, go live, and support. So these are all products, individualized products inside of our um, sandbox here, so in part of our product catalog. And I've said that this bundle, Rolling out a new module includes 10 hours of configuration time, 16 hours of training time, four hours of go live time, and 10 hours of post support time, okay? So I created each of these lines as a product inside of my catalog, and then I bundled them all in. This is all labor, okay? So I'm looking at this from a project standpoint. I told it right here that it is a phase bundle, okay? So what does that mean and how does that behave? Um, so bringing it into cell is exactly the same as bringing that last piece into cell. We just go source through our little box with our looking glass and we bring it in and it lines all of that out for us. However, if I wanna take that up a notch and I wanna just attach this to my existing opportunity, and I realize I'm flipping tabs, you guys can see the opportunity tab, right? Let me just show of hands for me. I wanna make sure that you're not still looking at the product catalog. Okay, awesome, thank you. So I'm gonna add that bundle by clicking the plus sign here to my existing opportunity. New module. And save and close. And you'll see here it brings over its own subset of products here, okay? So what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna get rid of some of these other products here because they're not necessary for what I'm about to show you. And that's going to take a moment to process. While well, that's processing, questions so far, just checking in, getting a pulse. Yeah, it looks like we're still doing good. All right, beautiful. So I'm going to convert this opportunity to a project. I'm just gonna say convert, project, next. I'm gonna create a new project, next. I'll bring over my most recent PDF of my proposal. I'm gonna tell it that I wanted to bring all of this information over. This is our phase bundle, okay? 
Now, as you see here, the phase bundle will be dissolved and any products that are not service products will no longer be part of the, pro the bundle. So if, for instance, I had a collaboration of things as one large project, um, and in that included hardware and software that were non-service class items, um, which are considered product-based, those would get dissolved from the bundle and show up on my product tab inside of my project. Um, these are all labor items, so it's not going to dissolve from the bundle. So I'm going to click Next. Here's my estimation of time, cost, and revenue. Next. I'm going to say it's my implementation, so we're going to let all of this just be kind of standard default right now and click Finish. All right, let's hit Save. And here's where the magic happens. So telling the system that this is a phase bundle is it literally converted to a phase in Manage. So in our project, it is phase one, and part of phase one is 10 hours of training, 16 hours of training, 197 hours of, or I'm sorry, like I'm, now I'm counting the ticket numbers, 16 hours of training, four hours of go live, and 109, or goodness, I'm telling you, I don't know where my mind is, it might as well be Friday, and 10 hours of support time. Okay, so it brought all of these over. Now we used um, potentially the same SKU here that brought it over this way as far as what our um, product description was. So we would need to maybe make a physical adjustment to that because um, I think one of those is supposed to be configurations. So I feel like it kind of brought that over a little weird, but normally that would bring it over just as is. But what it did, as you can see, is it created a ticket and it put that budget in place for that ticket. So now as you're building projects out, it's going to help build out those phases. Um, it does impact finance, and this is something that you have to know and understand, um, is that if you're doing anything fixed fee oriented from a financial perspective, it always makes that phase a bill phase separately with the fixed fee amount here, okay? Um, what that means basically is if you don't want to build the phases individually, but you still want to build them out, you're going to have to kind of go in and back that piece out of there and put it in the overall project total for yourselves. But this is a great way, especially if you do build based off of phase, it's a great way for you to be able to do that very simply. Does anybody have questions on that? I love these whole phase things. Now here's a, an add-on that I'll tell you about. With these phases, um, they typically don't play very well with, um, with templates. So you go, oh, I'm gonna have it just route to phases that I've already created in a template. It will not do that. Um, just like applying any additional template to an existing template in a project, it's going to continue to append. So if I wanted to, let's say, take this phase and I wanted to add um, a project template to this, I'll just wait for that to apply. What you'll ultimately see is this will innately just append everything that we have as a template below here. Um, if the template existed prior to the phase coming in, the phase would be at the, the, the new add phase that we just brought through from cell would actually be at the bottom of the template as opposed to at the top of the template. So you see our phase one still exists here, but if this phase was supposed to like, let's say replace this phase right here, I'd have to physically come in and just delete it. A lot of waiting, I'm sorry guys. F 
after seeing this stuff, anybody uh, just showing hands thinking that they might have a place for using bundles in their quoting or in their in their day to day use and in a way that maybe you didn't think of previously? No hands. Oh man, I'm sorry if this wasn't as valuable for you guys. So let me go ahead and just pop this puppy in here. I'm trying to drag and drop it, but it's not like in my drag and drop. Let's try and just maybe condense it. Okay, so ordinarily we could drag and drop our phase down but it does not appear to be wanting to work properly with us, but we can always move it around if need be. I'm not certain why it's not working well. It could be because I'm on the web browser as well um, versus being in the actual web client or the internet clients that they have for the desktop. Um, but then I would be able to reposition those phases. So since none of you are planning on using phases after this, let's move on to something that maybe else can help you guys. And that would be our tab linking. So let me get back to our connect Y cell. Okay. So linking tabs, kind of one of those things where it's like, hey, you know, Anytime I quote one of these, I'm also going to be quoting one of those type of scenarios, right? So we see this a lot with um, workstation installs this is a great example. Every time I quote a workstation install, it's always, always going to be an um, uh, AV license or installation or something along that. So we link tabs that say, if I update this, update that same product on another tab, based off of this quantity, okay? So to do that, there's a couple of things that we need to do, first and foremost, and that starts with we need to unhide some fields, okay? So I'm gonna come back to our prepare content here. And I'm actually gonna unbundle our items, and I'm just gonna use the things that we have currently. I didn't follow my own advice, I gotta un uncheck that header, sorry about that. Remove from bundle and do the same thing here. Remove from bundle. Okay. So let's say every time we update something on the hardware tab, we wanted to update something on the software tab. The first thing we're going to do is come to our hardware tab and we're going to say edit tab. And we talked about unhiding fields. That's exactly what we're gonna do. So we're gonna come here and click our edit button here and our edit button again. And we're gonna look for tab group. I just like to look for group. You can see there's a lot of groups. The one we're looking for is tab group. And we're gonna say, okay, save, save. So now I have this line here that says tab group. And I'm gonna give this either a grouping number, name, letter, whatever you wanna to do to group those tabs together. I'm just gonna put this as group one and hit save and close. And as I mentioned earlier, when you unhide a field, it becomes unhidden to every other one. So I can come here to my software tab and say edit tab, and I don't have to unhide it. It is now there, tab group, and I'm gonna say it is also part of group one and hit save and close. So now you can see these are both part of group one, okay? I have my hardware, I have my software, but what I am gonna say is that at a tab, this is my quantity source, okay? Which means that the products on tab hardware are what's going to control the quantities for tab software, okay, so A and B. So this is my quantity source. I hit save and close. So now that I've grouped these two, now I need to make the adjustment to our product so I can tell our product how to group and talk to one another. 
So to do so, I'm going to come here. I'm going to select miscellaneous and edit that. And I'm going to do the same thing. I have to unhide fields here. Okay. So I'm going to click the edit button and the edit button again. And this time I'm actually looking for what's called a group code. So I'm going to look for group and say group code and hit OK. And save. And save. Okay. So now I have my grouping code right here. And I'm going to say that this grouping code is going to be A. So we have one and we have A. And I'm going to take that grouping code and I'm going to pick something in software other than miscellaneous because it'll say manufacturer part number. Um, so let's just say service binder. And I'm going to also say that this is A. Save and close. So currently we have our service binder is set to a quantity of three. And our miscellaneous is set to a quantity of two. So if I move that to a quantity of one, that should automatically update our quantity here. And it didn't. Oh, I hate when ConnectWise makes a liar out of me. All right, let me see, what did we not do? Got my group, oh, I put that in the wrong line, that's why. Grouping code. Those are the factors, and we'll talk a little bit about factors if we have some time today. Um, factors are used for, let's say, when we are quoting labor is a great example of it. Um, if every time I quote a new managed device, maybe I've already pre-configured that it takes me 15 minutes of time. I'm planning for like 15 minutes of labor or installation time per managed device. Um, I can put in a factor that says increase this by this value. Um, so I can use a multiplier that says by 0.25. So if I said that I bill at $150 an hour and I want you to consider a quarter of an hour every time I do a quantity of one on the line item that it's linked to, um, that would be considered a dependent independent item. So if the independent item is one and the dependent items factor is 0.25, what you end up getting from that then is instead of it quoting one hour automatically at um, $150, it would give you the 32.50, I think is what it comes out to for a quarter of an hour at that. And then it'd go up by the 32.50 per quantities that you're adding. Um, where it also has value is we work with a lot of partners that say, well, you know, every time we do a new workstation installation, we quote a fixed amount of two hours per workstation no matter how long it takes us, it's part of their agreement. So you can also use um, custom rates for um, factors as well. So then I could say, instead of it being at a decimal point multiplier, I could say I want it on a custom, and that custom is two. So every time I quote one, I want that to be two. Um, so it's a, it's a next step up from the linking. So that's what that factor field was that we were looking at. All right, so let's see if that updated properly. We can come back here to our prepare content. So our service binder is still three. Our miscellaneous is one. We're going to try that one more time. Update. And it did not link. So I don't know why this is not linking. Grouping code is A. Prepare content. Grouping linking tabs can be a bit finicky. Uh, miscellaneous, edit. Our grouping code is A. Huh. Save and close. And I'm gonna have to look into why that's not linking. I apologize, and it could be have something to do with the update. So on um, on our next call for ConnectWise Tuesday, I will um, have an answer behind the linking and why that didn't come through. It might just be something that changed in the update that they did. Um, but if you have any questions or suggestions for ConnectWise Tuesday, please by all means reach out to me. Um, next week is going to be the industry spotlight with Will, um, and then we'll be circling back to manage. So I appreciate the time today. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you guys next week.